This is a lecture on section 2.4 of the periodic table. So there are some terms we should be familiar with when discussing the periodic table. And the first category of those are metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Metals are elements in the periodic table that are electrically conductive, thermally conductive, so they heat up very well. They also are very malleable and ductile, so conductive, malleable, and ductile. Malleable means that if you pound on them with a hammer, they don't break and shatter into smaller pieces. They just flatten out, as if you took a coin and put it on a railroad track. When the train runs over the coin, it'll spread it out. Ductile means that you can pull on them and turn them into wires. Conducting electrically, conducting thermally. Non-metals are generally non-conductive. non-malleable. So if you take a hammer to a solid non-metal, it'll shatter into pieces and non-ductile. So if you try to make a wire out of them, it doesn't work very well. They'll break into pieces. Metalloids are in between. So they sometimes conduct electricity, but not as well as a conductor. They um, can, on occasion, be made into wires, but it's more difficult with them. So let's take a look at the metals in the periodic table. So these are all the elements that are known from hydrogen up here at the top, number one, all the way to 114, un, un quartium. And they're actually, today, there are even a few more elements that have been discovered, but they're not very stable. So the metals are these elements right here. These elements here in the center. As well as these metals down here. and a few metals, for example, aluminum, indium, tin, thallium, lead, bismuth, and polonium. So these are the metals in the periodic table. Again, these ones tend to conduct electrically and thermally very well, and they can be made into wires. They're ductile and you can pound on them without having them break, so that makes them malleable. So these are the metals. Then there are the non-metals, which tend to be on the right side of the table. So for example, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, out here as well as some of the others over here on the right side. Phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine and argon, selenium, bromine, iodine, so forth and so on. All these ones over here on the right side. So these are the non-metals. And then you have the ones that are in between. And those are the metalloids. And the metalloids would be the boron, the silicon, the germanium, the arsenic, those ones right over there. So those are called metalloids. And they're sort of in between. So they do conduct electricity and heat better than the nonmetals, but not as well as the metals. Okay. So that's the general breakdown of
metals and nonmetals. The next terms we should be familiar with are the types of elements such as alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, noble gases, and halogens. And the reason we have the names as of these categories is that metals that are specifically alkaline metals have similar chemical properties. Metals that are alkaline earth metals have similar chemical properties. Noble gases, similar to one another in terms of their chemical properties, and the same for halogens. So there's four groups that we should know the names of. The first are the alkaline metals, which are in this first column. Lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and even francium, although francium is an unstable element, so we don't tend to work with it. These are called the alkali metals. They're very reactive to oxygen or fluorine or even water. If you drop one of these metals into water, it will react violently. Notice that although hydrogen is in the same column, this is not an alkali metal. The alkaline earth metals are also similar in properties to one another. Beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium. Again, radium is radioactive, so it's not very stable, but beryllium through barium have similar chemical properties, and these are called the alkaline earth metals. These are reactive in similar ways to the alkali metals, but not quite as reactive. So magnesium, for example, is reactive with water Calcium is reactive with water, but not as violently as these elements are. The third category are the, that we'll concern ourselves with are the noble gases. Those are over here. And notice they're all gases at room temperature, and they're all unreactive. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon this column right here. Similar chemical properties in the sense that they're not chemically reactive. And then finally we have the halogens. The halogens are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. These are relatively reactive elements. They tend to react with metals. Um, but they are similar in terms of the chemical properties. You'll see more of that in later courses. So those are the halogens. The metals here in the center, scandium, titanium, vanadium, some of the metals you've probably heard of, iron, for example, or nickel or copper, these are called the transition metals. So they're in this middle block here. And then these metals down here that are broken out, these are called the rare earth metals. Okay. Rare earth metals, sometimes referred to as lanthanides and actinides. Now there are, there's information in the periodic table that we should be able to use I often remind people we don't need to memorize them, but we should know them if we have a copy of the table. And the first is the element symbol. So the symbol is a one or two letter symbol to represent the name of the element. So hydrogen is a capital H, lithium is capital L, lowercase i. So the first letter should be uppercase, second letter lowercase, capital L, small i. The second piece of information is the atomic number. The atomic number is written above the symbol. So for hydrogen, it's one. For example, for boron, it's a five. And notice there's a pattern, one, two. Then we come down to the second row, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then we come over here, 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way through 18, 19, all the way through 
36, 37, all the way up to 54, 55, 56, and then notice 57 through 70 are the rare earths. Those are the lanthanides, so they come down here, 57 through 70, and then you start back up at 71, all the way through 86, 87, 88, Again, 89 through 102 are the actinides, 89 through 102, and then 103, 104, all the way through, in fact, all the way today, it's all the way up to 118. The reason these are broken out down here is nothing particularly important, except that if they were put in there, that would push all of the elements over to the right, and we would have to make this paper longer or make the square smaller, so they're pushed over there to the side. So that's called the atomic number, and we'll talk more about that when we get to that topic in the chapter. And then the last piece of information is called the atomic mass. So the atomic mass is it's difficult to see because this is printed so small, but the atomic mass is underneath the element symbol. So atomic mass, in a sense, the atomic mass is a measure of how heavy an atom of the element is. And so for lithium, for example, 6.941. We'll talk more about the units when we get to the discussion about atomic mass, but that's the atomic mass below. So atomic number above, atomic mass below, and then symbol above. You do not need to memorize the numbers. You don't need to memorize the symbols. You use the periodic table to look up the symbol, to look up the atomic number, and to look up the atomic mass. There are some that you should be aware of. You probably should know the symbols for the first, let's say, 30 elements all the way up to zinc, but it's not a requirement.